you you you've talked about Jesus before once or twice. I think. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just sorry, I I found that a little ir ironic. But anyhow, uh, I, you know what? I'm here to please. So, um, if you don't want to talk about your worldview, we don't have to. If you just want to talk about mine, fire away. Yeah, I would just like to to know how we think. Why you think the the the, the impersonal blind uh, cosmos gives gives rise to immaterial objects, and if immaterial things exist, why we don't allow why you don't allow for other immaterial things, and why calling it the cosmos and not understanding it as the God of the Bible is a better solution logically. Okay. I got to ask a favor of you. If you ask me a question, don't say why this and why this and why this. Don't know compound questions. Just simple, short questions. I'm a simple guy. So what do you want to go with? <laughs> These are complex thoughts, man. I'm trying, okay. Um, no, no compound questions, please. What, what, okay. what do you want me to answer first? Because what I, what I would love for this to be is sort of like a courtroom where you're the prosecutor and you say, blah, 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 blah. My answer, blah, 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 back and forth. You said that it was not a leap to move from an impersonal blind cosmos to the rise of immaterial truths that we can agree on. Explain to me the path that you used to get there. <laughs> there's a, so many, there's assumptions in that question. I, I don't believe, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on this. I, I think concepts can be viewed differently, but I, I don't believe the immaterial exists. So I would say a lot of what we call the immaterial are, um, functions of the material okay so we even look at the word itself it has an i in front of material right mm -hmm. it, it's it's not really describing anything it's describing what it's not mm -hmm. and i think that's a problem um so your question again was how do i go from what to what so so my argument is that you need a person of god to give rise to immaterial truths. You're saying you still give rise to immaterial truths from a blind no, no, did you hear what I just said? I, I said I'm not convinced immaterial truths exist. Oh, so you do not use logic or reasoning. Okay, now, how did you get from that to that? Uh, can you prove through a naturalistic worldview that logic and reasoning exist? It's a property of the universe. No, prove it through naturalism. It's my presupposition. You don't prove presuppositions. Okay. Now that we're back to your presupposition, how do you move from your presupposition of a cosmos yeah. to understanding immaterial truths? Oh. <laughs> you use the word immaterial again. So, well, yeah, that's that's what we're looking at. You saying so? Well, for, just so, what, I'll just ignore that. You use the word immaterial. So, what you're really asking me is, how do I move from my, from my presupposition to knowing? that this spoon exists better yet. How do you even know that that's a good presupposition to make? Oh, uh, because it's, uh, something that comports to a properly basic belief. And we already said that earlier, but your question was, how do I go from my presupposition to knowing a truth exists? <laughs> and I would do it. I truths. would define truth as something yes, that I'm using that word again. I would define truth as something that comports to reality. And I would say, uh, through testing through evidence. So we would say that the spoon has certain properties. Uh, we can pass it around and say that it's shiny. It's hard. It has a certain shape. Uh, we can put it through machines, so forth. Right. But we can't do that with logic and reason. Right. Because that's our presupposition. I think they exist the same way as that spoon exists. And I think you operate that way all the time. I disagree. What's your next question? Okay. <laughs> I, I have yet to understand how an atheist can come up with a reason for the existence of logic and reason. It's a property of the universe. How, what, what sense does it make to say something exists in a certain time and space uh, and not exist at the same time? Uh, how, does, how does the law of identity make even sense if the universe doesn't exist? So the, the existence of the universe itself makes the property of, of self-identity self-evident. It is but a you, very properly basic presupposition that we both share. I don't think we share it the same way because I don't think you well, can get, I don't think we can get logic and reasoning from a blind, 
uh, an articulate random force. Yeah, we, I don't. We disagree. Do you think they do come from it? Come from the cosmos, yeah. Yeah, what's the probability of something like logic and reasoning coming from a blind random force? What's the probability that we're here? Or that the universe is here or the cosmos is here? What's the probability that God exists? Isn't it one? So my answer is one. One out of what? <laughs> I've got no, 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 no. The probability is, probability right is usually zero between zero and one. I'm saying the probability of our universe, the cosmos existing, is one. Okay. Just like you would say the probability of God existing is one. But that spoon can be proven to, to exist yep. through naturalism. And there are a lot of things the atheist is using that he cannot prove with his naturalism. Right. We use our, our core presuppositions. And where are we getting those presuppositions? from our naturally properly basic beliefs. And I actually think you're borrowing heavily from the Christian worldview because we know where those things come from and we articulate Wait, where- Joe, notice what you're doing. You're just disagreeing with me. Okay, fine. We just disagree. Are we done? I, I, I think so. If, if, if you don't have answers for it and it's I've just I've answered going to be every question you've asked me very, with very short, concise answers. What have I not That's answered? True. No, no, you have. You just disagree with my answers, but I've answered, and I think my answers make sense. You just disagree with the core presupposition. That's all. And if you read Greg Bonson and and talk to your reformed friends, they'll tell you that what I'm doing is perfectly fine, and and this is someone with different worldviews can do exactly what you're doing. But I think it would be worth your time to evaluate the fact that those presuppositions are not well based in logic and the Christian worldview provides a much better logical base for where your own presupposition. I'm saying that logic is an outflowing of my pre presupposition. Logic is a what? I don't outflowing. Just like you would say, logic is it comports to the God's nature. It's an outflowing of his nature. I'm, I'm using the same answers you're using. Don't you said it well earlier that the only difference between you and I is that you add a mind to it, a personal mind. That's the only difference, right? 